Hello, welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez. This is interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the big challenges facing this country and the region. In today's program, we discuss the 2020 Global Forum on Migration and Development, which takes place in Quito, Ecuador. It's a meeting attended by governments, civil society, and NGOs from all over the world to discuss migrant flows. And this year, the Venezuela migration has been the main topic. For that, we have Alexander Yanis, Vice Minister for Multilateral Issues of Venezuela, who is part of the forum. So let's take a look at a video on this topic first. The 12th Global Forum on Migration and Development took place in Ecuador on January 21st. The objective of this event is to look for answers to migration problems, especially to the Venezuelan exodus, in a national, regional and international level. Ecuador was expected to propose ideas to achieve a safer, more ordered and regular migration flow. Around 1,500 representatives from 150 countries participated in this forum. According to data from Ecuador's government, more than 365,000 Venezuelan citizens entered the country in between 2014 and 2019. Follow our analysis. Thank you for joining us, Minister Yanis. So first tell us about the importance of having this global forum on migration and development. Bueno, muy bien. Muchas gracias, well, Carla, thank you very por la much, Carla, for your invitation. The World Forum of Migration and Development is a need because migration is transforming itself into an agenda, a world agenda. It is important to say that migration is a process that has a process of, of increasing worldwide. Uh, so, any process that uh, is happening right now in the world is part of this tendency. It's fundamental, the participation of all the member countries of the United Nations in trying to decipher some, uh, some international rules to have a, how to treat migration. Venezuela has said that migration is not an, uh, an affair of something practical, but it's a human affair. So that's how it should be dealt with. We have said that it's also important to defend the institution of migration. Migration. There has been a tendency to make migration a political topic, and we as member countries of the United Nations should try to see this, uh, this topic as an objective and scientific way in terms of, of trying to help the people who are, the, those who are affected. So tell us, how does the figures of the migrants are being handled in forums like this, where we have uh, people from all over the world talking about how many people, how many Venezuelan migrants are reaching their countries. The numbers is, is part of what we try to present as a wrong policy in terms of uh, migration, to deal migration as a practical topic. Because if so, the way to visualize uh, migration is by gathering money from donors, both uh, from government or non-governmental. Frequently, there has been, there has been this thesis that it's necessarily to motivate the, the donors, and that's why you just send numbers out to the air that are not, uh, that are not based on real numbers, and the methodologies are totally inadequate. In the case of the Venezuelan migration, we have asked through our foreign affairs minister uh, to, to requesting the countries that have received uh, our migrants to give us our numbers, but these have not been answered. But of course, the numbers are, are sent to the news media. So it's clear that uh, the numbers that are, that are bigger than they really are has a political purpose and an economical purpose, which is to obtain funds to, to use uh, this money for internal affairs that not necessarily have to do with migration. We have just seen in Colombia how they just, uh, they just fired the, the chief of migration because he used the, the funds for migration for other things. He sent it to other purposes. Just like this is done, the numbers are also changed because the majority 
Because if the numbers are blown up, there are more resources. We are not saying with this that there is no uh, Venezuelan migration. Yes, it does exist. What we're just saying is that it's overblown with per concrete purposes, which is to obtain funds and to give uh, some validation that that will politically hinder the the. The, the policies of uh, Mr. Maduro, that they're leaving, the people are fleeing the country for political reasons. I must say that the Venezuelan migration is fundamentally economic, and it's economic because on behalf of the U.S. government, there is a, an enforcement of unilateral blockade that has, that has damaged the national economy. This is going on for 10 years already. Uh, it was... Uh, um, it was uh, first published, published by in 2015, but uh, it happened before. It, it started way before. So this is said by the special the special envoy for coercive measures, and in the 2019 report. It says that the, that the U.S. government has, has enforced a, the, these measures for over a decade. This doesn't allow our people to be able to pay uh, for a lab. Uh, that, so we can get um, so we can get important vaccines, and when our government wants to pay it, it's impossible to do so because there's a blockade, and and the, the laboratories that uh, that sell these vaccines are also threatened to sell them to to Venezuela. So what happens on the other side is that uh, this is according to the media, this is the responsibility of of Venezuela of the government, but it's really not. And it's also interesting to analyze um, the double standards that were managed in the figures of the migrants reaching several countries in the region, especially Colombia. We see a lot of migrants from Colombia, but the issues doesn't seem to be important for media, but the Venezuelan migrants are. How do you see, what do you see this um, being explained to, to media, to people? Well, one of the points that we have made in the World Forum is the need that uh, these topics be, be of equal importance. We, we think that this global forum that is held in Quito was not about global migration policies, but about a, a specific case, which is the Venezuelan. We would have liked to listen about how the kids are caged on the U.S. border, the separation of Central American families in the United States, or speak about the 5,000 uh, dead people in the Mediterranean Sea, or the mistreatment of Africans in Europe, or or the five million Colombians that migrated to Colombia. These topics have not been dealt with during this forum, which is which makes it even clear that there is a intention for this uh, for this for this forum. There is a double standard on this topic. We have asked uh, the forum that there must be coherency between what we sign in this global pact of migration with the with the specific measures that are that are implemented by governments. The agreement says that it must be uh, Sure, it must be regulated, but later with the with the the way they implement these uh, these measures, it is obvious that that there's a criminalization of the migration and there's an inadequate treatment that uh, causes unsafe migrations. A simple example is how some South American countries have issued the acceptance of, uh, have, ex have accepted the, the use of, of already of passports that are no longer valid. This makes it even more, more insecure because a person who does not have a valid passport and tries to leave Venezuela, they cannot leave. They cannot leave uh, the country with a uh, with a non-valid passport. So what they do is they leave through other illegal paths. And uh, now they're an irregular migrant because they they are don't they're not in our numbers. 
and o, now um, criminales then de criminal, they are captured by criminal, sexual, criminal trafficking and those persons uh, who live in this condition are now an insecure migrant and there is no way to register him, this person leaving the country. So this has an influence on the numbers. Nobody speaks about it, but it's important. En, en el foro y en otro and espacio, we have uh, called it out on the need to be objective eh, and scientific on this topic. Now, also, the government of uh, Venezuela, since he can't control the, the blockade from the United States and all the economic issues that are affecting people that are leaving the country, what is it doing to prevent more people from leaving or helping the people that need most help? Well, the first thing that we must say is that the social protection system of the Bolivarian government that has been developed over the past 20 years is based on 75% of the global uh, budget. So there is a, there is a legal disposition that, uh, that aims at, at helping the social, everything that has to be in the social realm, health, education. All of these systems have been affected by the U.S. blockade. The capacity to obtain resources to, to put supplies in hospitals, medicines, equipments, has been, has been hindered. Nevertheless, the government has maintained the thesis that the 75% of the budget that will be dedicated to the social areas. There have been uh, programs of CLAP, which is the food distribution. This uh, reaches every family in Venezuela and it has a coverage dateada por incluso organizaciones of, uh, de las Naciones Unidas de más del 97% of 95, del narco, 97% in the national territory. Y esto es una evidencia del trabajo que se hace This is an evidence of what we're doing to try to, to mitigate the effects of the blockade. Another thing we do is uh, general information to the, to the people. Por ejemplo, testimonios We have seen testimonies of Venezuelans who are coming back and that it, that it makes the rest of the people see what the reality is of these migrants when they go to other countries. Because there was a lot of propaganda that tried to show that the, that the conditions were good for everybody who wanted to leave. And the reality has proven that is not so. It's, it's been to a point that a president has created a plan that's called Back to Our Homeland. And it's a way to help those Venezuelans who want to come back little bit more about this return to the homeland plan and how does it work and especially how the media portrayed it because we haven't seen many reports about people returning to Venezuela. We see reports all the time of people trying to enter uh, speci specifically Ecuador but not of Venezuelans going back. Why is it not uh, reflected on media? Well, the plan Return to the Homeland is designed by the, by the government of President Maduro as a response to the need of thousands of Venezuelans that, uh, that have gone to our offices and to our embassies or consulates around the world, particularly in Latin America, asking uh, to go back to the country and that their condition doesn't allow them to. So um, with the Venezuelan Airlines, they developed developed a, a plan to, to bring all of these Venezuelans back up until now. 16,000 Venezuelans have been brought back, and we have a waiting list of over 50,000. This list grows every day. That is, a, that is a consequence of the hard situations that the Venezuelans have found abroad. It is not financed with United Nations uh, resources. These are, this is money of the Venezuelan country, regardless of the blockade that we have. We have interviewed those who are going back to the homeland and the majority have said 
Eh, le hemos consultado por qué razón se puede them, why, We asked them, why did you live in Venezuela? Ese número 99,93% uh, has said that they left for economic measures. So uh, the, these, uh, this blockade has, been the, the, has, come, has caused that people leave our country. De los venezolanos y por eso eh, efectivamente han migrado. El día de And mañana pasado tomorrow, mañana está saliendo un vuelo uh, vuelta a la patria de Chile. There is a new flight back to Venezuela. This is an ongoing process. And interesting things happen. Interesting things happen, like, like those countries who speak of how there's a many people that come from Venezuela. When we say them, when we tell them, okay, um, let open the door so we can bring back this plan of bringing Venezuelans back. They say, no, we're not going to do it. And what they try to do is pay um, pay taxes. And so we see that there's a double standard. On one hand, uh, the countries say that the, the migration collapses their situation. But when the Venezuelan government uh, wants to apply a, a solution, they don't want to. They put restrictions. Why? Because behind all of this, there's a... There's a business because they're using uh, the migration, the Venezuela migration in an inhumane way. So all of these topics were discussed in this global forum on migration and development. How do you see at the end, the, mo the last days of this forum, how does it um, portray migration and is it finding solutions or not just solutions but ways to handle migration in a more humane way? Sí, la, la situación well, central es the, que, eh, the central situation that we spoke about in the forum yesterday si is that if the, the purpose of, of dealing with this topic is based on uh, Entonces, economic resources, eh, then everything is distorted, any, any measures, because uh, what's going to happen is that the numbers are going to be different, eh, and they're going to be blown up so the countries can get more money. We have proposed a uh, humane migration, and this is how everything should be dealt with. Here, the role of each government is fundamental. The governments must have the control on the migratory process, the, 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 legal, uh, the legal disposition of each country to establish a general framework that would be, so, that would be humane and have solidarity that would respect migration as a human right. So any person who wants to migrate from another country from, for any reasons will have of their security, their personal situation guaranteed as well as the, the, of, the, of their family. If we allow that organisms that should not be there, sometimes non-governmental organizations that are well financed by the U.S. government, then we start uh, these processes are, are changed, are distorted, because this passes by the fact that we can we can give you money, and then uh, then it, it goes into a different realm. There is no ethics. It uh, does not recognize the human process of migration, and therefore it is just used for uh, to get more money as a business as a business tool. So we ask uh, that we treat this in a bilateral mode between the the countries and multilaterally in the in the organizations that have been created. And for, for our last question, I also want to ask you if you see a way out of um, this this way that migration has been handled? Do you see any other organizations that could do a better job in analyzing migration and making, it, making sure that most people understand how it works globally? Sí, bueno, eh, que la, well, we think uh, that the participation of para, uh, digamos, the multilateral participation is fundamental uh, to establish a framework entiende, where the international law is respected and we can deal with this problem. It's important to say that migration is an effect of a determined situation. This is a consequence of something that is happening. All of the decisions that are held uh, it's because of the, of the migration itself. We think that we should go after the causes. 
este tema. Eh, cuando vemos el tema sirio, el tema libio, When we see what happens eh, in Syria and Libya, we see that uh, uh, the volumes eh, obedecen a la intervención militar answer the, por parte to the military de intervention on behalf of, a, of la salida a powerful de, countries. De, and this has caused the people to flee. Las In this case, the unilateral measures of the United States are the ones that are causing this migration. So if we could find uh, a, put a way to put the end to the causes, to promote peace and internal, internal development, we're sure that the migration would stop. Let's see the case of, uh, of Africa. This is, it's a consequence of the extraction of the natural resources. But the impossibility to receive uh, migration is, is terrible. So this is a very complex de desarrollo económico eh, y problem, las causas, deben, causas en efecto ser atendidas. Ahora, be dealt with. ¿Qué otras organizaciones pudiesen atender este tema? Could en go primer lugar, las Naciones Unidas. United Hay un Nations, organismo que se llama la Organización that is called the International Organization of Migration that has atención a estos a estos asuntos, that eh, speaks about por supuesto this. a nivel latinoamericano y caribeño, asistía a la UNASUR, uh, eh, que UNASUR tenía una línea de trabajo a, en materia a, de, that has de migración a line sobre determined la for this. ciudadanía suramericana, based on the, on the Latin American citizenship. We have the, estos temas. the community of Latin American and Caribbean states that it can also be an si organism. But if, there's a, if there is a political standpoint on this, it will always be hard. Subject, but maybe a humane way and a more just way to see migration. Thank you very much, Minister Yanis, for your time. We've Thank been talking you. to Alexander Yanis, Vice Minister for Multilateral Issues of Venezuela, on the 2020 Global Forum on Migration and Development in Quito, and the importance to create consensus and develop solutions to global migration. Thank you for watching interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time.